Okay, so to start up the link, you turn it on. Okay. And if it's warmed up and ready to go, uh, the tape command is 0700700. Yeah, I remember that. 73. Uh, actually, it's, sorry, it's 701. Yeah, right. 701 7300. So that's read and check group at yep. block 300 for all the blocks that the memory can hold, which okay. is eight blocks. From unit zero. And we're talking octal here. <laughs> talking octal, okay. From yeah. unit zero. From unit zero? Yes, this is unit zero. Over here on the left. So wind the tape on a bit. Holy but you're not supposed to do oh, that. Oh boy, yeah. And, and then, the other one may spin. Well, okay. Which it, it's he, good that it's doing that. He hit do tog, which does this uh, this instruction. So that's now read the. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, that's now read that uh, set of blocks in. And this tape was spinning out of control, and to stop that, you just tap the right button. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we have just now read in the first section of lap six, the operating system. And to start it, you do a start 20, which is the middle start button. And mm -hmm. you're in luck, that's what you see on the screen. Well, you'll either see that or you'll see the most recent manuscript that you have been typing in. Gotcha. Now, um, I don't know what kind of documentation you have. Do you have a LAP6 handbook? It doesn't have any. Not yet. Anything. So, we, we have to get an order together for these kind of documents and get some printed up mm -hmm. uh, because we don't have very many back in St. Louis. Uh, some simple commands, uh, one that lets you see the programs that are on the tape, would be the meta key, which is up here. Mm -hmm. Meta puts an arrow down at the bottom of the screen. That's basically the command line prompt. And you do DX. Display index. Display index, okay. Tape will spin. On tape. And then you'll get a flickering display of programs. <gasps> so, okay. Martini, draw, TTT, TTT, 3D. Yeah, these are basic uh, demo, little, okay. little demo programs. Uh, if there's more than one page of programs on there, you can scroll through them by hitting first the case key mm -hmm. and then zero. Very logical. Okay. If you want to go backwards, you can go backwards one line okay. with case W. Mm -hmm. You can go backwards a page with case Q. Case Q. Oh, no more flicker. Well, it's because there's less being displayed. Case 1 will move forward one line at a time. Mm -hmm. um, so let's bring up another one of the programs like Martini. That's the famous martini glass. So if you hit return, we'll get out of uh, this display. <clears throat> and then the command to load a binary program is meta, L-O for load. Mm -hmm. an extra. And I hit an extra character, which is good, because now I can show you that a case followed by a delete will delete one character. Mm -hmm. So L-O space. That's an N. Yes, I see that. It felt wrong. <coughs> I can't do this in an angle. So... Yeah, you got some garbage, yeah. Yeah. Hello, Martini. Now, when you type in a program name, it has to be terminated by a comma. Mm -hmm. And the comma's in an odd place on the link keyboard. Mm -hmm. It is case and then an upper... Yeah, I gotcha. It's yeah. a hyphen, yeah. Yeah, over there. Over right. in the unit now, number. Normally you have to put in a unit number. Right, zero. zero happens to be understood, so you can leave that blank, but uh, for grammatical correctness you should put the zero in. Gotcha, okay. Okay, so then the tape will spin, and if everything goes well, uh, you'll probably hear a ding, because some of the early programmers didn't know the convention within lap six, 
that it starts executing <laughs> at Helps location the one. The gong, perhaps. For whom the gong perhaps chimes. And ah. it has now chimed. Uh -huh. It has chimed. And, it may not. and it may not. then you sometimes have a choice. Uh, the program might start at 20 and it might start at 400. Mm -hmm. Most of these will start at 20. Mm -hmm. There were some oddball programs around that you had to put a number in the right switches and then do a start right switches. Gotcha. But uh, later, more sophisticated programs will just start up all by themselves. Okay, and there we are. And knob zero controls the size of the glass. And um, what happened to the olive? Oh, and where is this? There's thing? a sense switch for that, maybe? Oh, we just lost Something the. Just well, it, it fills. The, it, the line oh, in the, it's filling and it's, the, it's, it's unfilling. It's empty. I thought there was it's a switch emptying. that controlled the uh, olive. The olive? What happened to the olive? We've had the olive all week. <laughs> the olive went away. <laughs> what a wonderful title. We've had the olive all week. <laughs> well, that, 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 that's a mystery, switch. Bruce. <laughs> we got two martinis, maybe it's a, a different version. We got a stick in there, but no olive on the stick. There's no, no stick. Oh, there's no stick. Well, the stick and the olive. There's a line in the middle that shows the level going down. Now, how do you stop a program? Oh, all sorts of oh, wait ways. Wait a second. Wait a second. <laughs> wait a second. You got an idea? No, I don't think that was. It's on two different channels. There's a. Th this little switch here switches between channel zero and channel one, and. And uh, nobody but Maury plays with that switch. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> you got oh that, my God. that was a dig. <laughs> really? <laughs> okay. I think so. Hey. It's going off and let it sit, right? There are several ways of uh, stopping a program. One is just to push the do tog lever okay. down. Okay. That, that stops it. Uh, doesn't do much of anything else. Um, Why didn't it just do that read again? You could, the read again. I pushed it down, not oh. up. Oh, that's it's that's the, down there. It says that's not the do tog button. That's the stop button. Okay. <laughs> Same lever. If you hit the resume lever, it just goes on back because cool. it's still in memory. It's still in memory. The core yeah. memory retains things. Mm -hmm. which Definitely. Is one of its beauties. Yeah. Uh, if you really want to kill it off, you hit clear. There's the memory. And it's yes. gone. Now, no trace. Play on the Bach. Bach. Can't. Oh. Takes two tapes and they're a special configuration. Oh, <laughs> the Bach. That's why we need more tape. Well. It can be done on one tape, but it takes a lot of room. And it takes a, uh, a lap 6 uh, 13L or some weird <laughs> configuration. So, is this the uh, best? This is a good lesson. Good comprehensive lesson. So, DX for, for listing. Right. And then uh, LO and the program name and the index. Yep. And uh, once we get your. Uh, good copy of the lap six handbook. Then I'll be able to go uh, through the handbook, yeah. And then you can call me in. <laughs> okay. Say, I will. What I definitely heck? will. I, I see what this command says that it does, but what the heck does that mean? Of course, the key thing for me is when I turn it on and I'm like, there's blinking lights, but are they the right blinking lights? Well, when you first turn it on, uh, one of the first things to do is to hit the clear. And if it doesn't, if it doesn't go, if it goes ding, if it goes halls, ding, you, you, you keep you hitting, gotta warm it up, for it, a while. or keep hitting the clear and keep looking at where it's uh, gone in uh, its, it's memory. It's not likely to help very much. To uh, it's not like the, just if warming up. Yeah, if, uh, if it's really warm and you, you have trouble, then then you got trouble. Yeah. So, um, so I, I think the next step is to find some supply of tape so that we can grandfather our tapes into your collection. Sure. How are you going to copy the tapes? They will have to be physically done on a working link. Right. Either sure. at Wisconsin or here. Or, or, uh, or if we uh, can get another Wisconsin one to come up out of, uh, yeah. out of the woodwork. Uh-huh. Um, okay, so you're I, only going to have one tape for the time yeah. being. Mm-hmm. Because I don't have any to spare. You, you know, the problem is I have to destroy a tape in order well, to the, write something. There on. is a huge box, boxes of them at yeah, the museum, know, so that is the 
logical place to go. But we've got to get them to realize that the data on there is probably not worth anything at all. And copying, well, How yes. do you get through the RS-232 port off if we were to want to do that? The, that requires some complexity. Um, I was going to hold on to the RS-232 interface mm -hmm. until you guys are ready sure. to but use Tom could it. send you the, the uh, design. He yeah. could, he's got it sketched out. He could send Guys you, could build one here. Yeah. yeah. It's not difficult to build, actually. Yeah, but they can't buy the connectors. Well, maybe they'll find them. There's, they probably exist as part of old hardware, other places. Uh, we, we need mating connectors infinal, for infinal those Amphenol. Amphenol blue ribbon, uh, ribbon connectors. Uh, okay. Uh, Gerald, what about uh, if you sent if you sent tapes, uh, copying is then fairly straightforward, right? You just yeah. Yes. Uh, in fact, why don't I just copy? give you a quick uh, view of the copy command? Mm -hmm. Yes, that would be good. I think Severo's suggestion is very good. So you started up lap six, and um, let's just assume that you're going to copy from unit zero to unit one. Mm -hmm. We'll put a blank tape on unit one. We won't go into the business of marking a tape. No, no, no. If you start with a fresh degaussed tape, there is a process of, of formatting it. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, question, Gerald. If they, uh, I've forgotten. If they start with a tape that is not degaussed, uh, can, will, this, will the mark actually? The mark will mark it. Um, it, will, will it be confused because it's it maybe can be an overlap? Confused. You can be confused by okay, a kind so of a, you know... The best thing is to degauss it. Yeah. Do you, have a, do you have some degaussing mm -hmm. mechanism? Mm -hmm. Nope. You can well, try we'll without it. Take it to the airport. I would say that you have a <laughs> yeah, pretty reasonable good chance. chance that it would work without being degaussed. Uh -huh. It's just kind of cleaner to You'd make like sure to you... would like to have the front end of it a little bit in front but of what was But there might be some noise. There might be some noise in the interpulse zones. Yeah, yeah, right. Anyway, so the copy command is meta... CP. Yeah, you got a glitch again. I can't. You got double arrows. I'll give it over. <coughs> you got a you space, got a space in, in there. <coughs> you got a cough in there, that's what happened. Now you're. There we go. There. It's hard to tighten the dark. All right, so it okay. says copy some number of blocks from block oomph to block oomph. Oh, no. <laughs> and each unit oomph. And you just you just enter those numbers in the, with a the return. Yeah. So you put in from zero. block zero on unit zero to block zero. Zero on unit, unit one. one. Mm -hmm. And don't hit return. Cause don't hit return because it'll well it'll air out. Um, yeah, except that. Is there a way to back out of this? Uh, I, I did it wrong. I did it wrong. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Right. You don't want to copy zero you, blocks. You, you want to copy a thousand blocks. Okay. I forgot. Is that a whole tape? Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly one whole tape. That's okay. 512 blocks. From block zero, unit zero to block. Come on. Block zero. Yeah, one. One. That's what I started like. with. If I start that, it's the tape will go running it. down there, and then it'll buzz the other thing. unit. Don't how want to do, do that. How do you back out of that gracefully? Uh, so there's there's a way, and it's in the lap six handbook, really? but I don't remember. Just push clear, right? Well, yeah. Well, not there. <laughs> well, yes, That's you, could, you could certainly clear memory and then do tog and go back, but... Well, you can surely you can stop this. Yeah. Well, no, but th there's a way to, to clear oh, clear the uh, entries yeah, that's, that that's you fine. just put in there yeah. so and start, uh, start over. Without doing anything to your tape. Mm -hmm. and you the thing to, is, though, Severo, that some of those meta commands don't preserve your manuscript. They just assume you're going to come back from that command. Mm -hmm. So your manuscript may not be totally cleaned up. Mm -hmm. uh, when you do an exit, it cleans up the manuscript such that you don't have to come I back see. to lap six properly. But that copy, if you did what you just did, you might lose whatever was in the current manuscript area. Uh huh. Now, um, if you want to exit gracefully from lap six, it's meta EX. And that will ensure that anything you had typed stays in there. And it goes ding right away. If you raise the resume lever at mm -hmm. this point, you go back. It yeah. rewinds the tape. Okay. No, 
resume is not really resume, it's, it's quit. Well, it's well, resume the program. The program says yeah, rewind yeah, the tape. Yeah, right. And the best thing, <laughs> and as Scott told me last night, keep the tape in the house in the best temperature environment yeah. I can. Yeah. Uh, uh, wrap it in prayer flags. It's <laughs> the, not the, the oxide, ultra sensitive, the, but it's the best to not can fall off. put it in widely fluctuating temperatures. Yeah. Okay, so um, unless you want to try anything else, uh, we can. I think we should. I should show you around here, and and then we'll we can get off to, yeah. off to get off to Poon Hill. Excellent. It was worth turning around. Though. It was indeed. Was <laughs> Great. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much. The machine. Yes. The very and the simplest repair I ever did. Mm -hmm.